is a pretty impressive structure here. Wow, look at that. Look at look it. Look at the huh? line in front. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That uh, looks like a school group. Let's hope it's not a big line. I promise you there wouldn't be a line. It did. There's also some other museums here. Oh, we got the Contemporary Arts Museum and over wow, here. Wow, it's a great place to be. Over here. We ah, have... next time we'll have to go to the Civil War Museum. Yeah. That looks really interesting. They both do. And we have the Ogden Museum of Southern Art. Lots to do here. Obviously another trip. Outside the complex, when they first built it, they allowed people to purchase bricks. It's quite impressive. Hi, I'm Lisa. And I'm Bob. Welcome to the Messy Suitcase Travel Vlog. Today, we're going to um, talk about a little bit of our trip back to Mexico from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you and know, how we're breaking it up. And how we're breaking up. Usually it's a, it's a four or five day drive, um, and uh, principally because the cats can't take, take it in the car for extended periods of time, so we break it up. And uh, you know, this time we're spending uh, two nights in New Orleans. That's right, and then two nights in San Antonio, right near the Riverwalk. And what we decided to do with our non-driving day today was uh, to go to the uh, World War II Museum here in New Orleans. Go ahead. Come on in. All right. We're at the National World War II Museum. I'm not sure I can capture all this on video, man. Now we're going to go on to a train where they've got a short five minute introductory video. But these are uh, something like the trains back in the, back in the 40s. All aboard, the Transcontinental Limited will depart shortly. Please make sure your belongings are stowed and enjoy the ride. <clears throat> the, uh, the first thing we did uh, once we purchased our tickets was to go to the, uh, to the movie. Uh, and, uh, uh, what was it called? Beyond Boundaries was the name of the introductory movie. You could pay extra for nine dollars and uh, definitely worth seven dollars. Oh, seven. Seven dollars, yeah. And uh, it was definitely worth it. It was they call it a 4D experience, and uh, didn't really know what that was before we went in there. But 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 after. But coming now out, that we've been snowed upon yeah. and our seats have vibrated. <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the movie, I mean, this, this, I mean, this movie was, was great. It, uh, it was almost an hour long mm -hmm. and in very clear, concise, uh, easy to understand you know, terminology, it explained World War II. 
you know, sort of its its, its origins, who the major players were, how it all happened, you know, a timeline. Uh, to me, it put World War II in, into perspective with U.S. civilization, essentially, and, well, it, actually, the whole world civilization, and explained how important it was and how it took over the entire globe and how um, World War II had to happen and take over the entire globe or we really faced having repressive regimes. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, but to me it just sort of put, put everything into just one giant perspective, you know, because usually in your history classes, you know, you, you know, you sort of get a little bit of an overview, but then you just sort of focus on individual events uh, individual things, you know, maybe what's happened in Europe, maybe what's happened in, you know, in uh, in the Pacific, um, you know, and, and you know, just sort of forget ever, ever anything about anything that happened in uh, in Russia. But uh, this this made World War II so much so much clearer to me. And then the uh, you know the, the visuals and the you know the, the the way they put it together was was just tremendous. It was incredible. There was a scene where they were showing a plane flying, where actually a cockpit of a plane came down from the ceiling and went right into position, and then behind it, you could see all these other planes flying and bombing and shooting at each other, and the cockpits moving back and forth, and you almost felt like you were in the sky. Yeah. And you felt... Yeah, the vibrations in your seat. In, exactly, in yeah. your seat. It was incredible. And then at the end, they had uh, these... Uh, uh, the participants, uh, individual participants, uh, the real, you know, the soldiers, sailors, uh, you know, whatever, you know, sort of walk up on stage, and I would have sworn that there, was, there were real people there. It was so realistic, you yeah. know, that uh, you know that was wanted to go up there and shake their hands, but uh, you know, it wasn't. I don't know how they did that, but it was the most real, most three D realistic, you know, uh, presentation. Of yeah, the so they were going to walk seen. right out into yeah. the audience. Yeah. So uh, you know, we were super happy about that. I was a little disappointed, you know, when they told me it was an hour show. And I looked at my watch; it was only 51 minutes. I felt gypped out of you know that nine, that nine more minutes because uh, it was just so, you know, so fabulous. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> it was also narrated by Tom Hanks, so you knew you could trust him. So, as a general overall impression. What did you think of our day at the World War II Museum here in New Orleans? I thought that after five and a half hours, I still had about 20 hours more that I wanted to discover. Yeah. And, it uh, was unbelievable, really. I, I would say it was one of the best museums I've ever been in in my life. Right. And, uh, you know, we were there for, just like you said, five and a half hours. And there were three major exhibits that we never got a chance to go to. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, you know, we were one. We, we couldn't absorb anything more in our mind and our brains from from reading stuff. Uh, and you know, plus we were sort of getting a little tired after. We ran so, out of time. Too. Yeah, plus our, our feet were getting a little tired, and my back was getting a little sore after being on my feet most of the day. And they were closing up in a few minutes. Uh, they're gonna give us the boot. But man, if you're ever in New Orleans, you know it's well worth the time, well worth the money. Um, you know, the experience is just uh, just tremendous. So we had to decide what is it we were going to focus on. And so they have a number, they actually have several buildings and a number of different exhibits. But we decided we were really interested in focusing on the road to Berlin and what happened in, in, Europe, in, in the, the European, European theater. theater. Yeah. There was also the Pacific Theater, which we'll have to go to the next yeah. time. There was a whole other exhibit about democracy. Yeah. And, and there was an exhibit about D-Day. And this museum actually started out you know, as a museum about D-Day. And uh, yeah. they, they it sort of expanded, and now it covers I don't know you know three or four different structures that are sort of somewhat interlinked, yeah. you know, because they they've expanded at various different times. Uh, it's only been around since about 2000. And they're still constructing it. Yep. They're in the process of building an outdoor peace pavilion that looks like it's going to be pretty awesome as well. But just a uh, just a, a fantastic experience. Definitely take the time to uh, to visit if you're in New Orleans.
lasts just long enough to be captured by the news reels. Send the English Channel to the waiting enemy at Utah Beach. After a 41-minute flight across the channel, the first rays of daylight revealed the world. But the fight in France has just begun. One of our high boys faced a brand new danger. Line after line of impossible vegetation. In the history of the U.S. Army, over 600,000 American soldiers, nearly 90,000 casualties. But now, the road to Berlin is open. would rather annihilate the very people and nation he professes to love than admit defeat. Most men of courage, of sacrifice, forged on the battlefields of Europe as they fought to free us from the darkest of tyrannies and restore a sense of hope to the world. called the American Sector Bar and Restaurant inside the museum. Wow, I was not expecting a real restaurant. This is so much better than I was expecting. I know, it's pretty darn fabulous, isn't it? It is. Wow. So we just went through the road to Berlin, but uh, and we also saw beyond all boundaries. We did not see the final mission, and we did not go through the road to Tokyo. And uh, it's been a pretty busy day so far. <laughs> so let's continue on to the busy Boeing Hall. Busy and fascinating. Uh, we're now going into the Boeing Center, U.S. Freedom Pavilion. That, that is so Just a wow. Wow. Wow is right. Holy heck. Can't even capture this on video. It's too big. At least with video you can move it though. Yeah. There's a Man. bomber here. Yep, that thing in the middle is a bomber. Wow. Uh, this is just incredible. You can up in, we can go up to that catwalk there, we can walk around them. You see some people over here. And there's a, then there's a second level. It's a cockpit of a B-24D. ship that my father served on. These are all the Medal of Honor winners from World War II. How many did you say there were? 436. 436.
Yeah, if you have a fear of heights, don't come here. They're right. Well, we're pretty far up. Luckily, I don't have a fear of heights. This is a uh, B-17, and uh, during World War II, 1942 actually, it uh, had an emergency landing in Greenland and was abandoned there. And it was only recently that uh, it was retrieved from Greenland and restored by a uh, Ohio businessman, and now uh, resides in, in the museum here. So it took a team of about uh, 20 volunteer restorers, seven years, and 80,000 hours of work to restore this after it was uh, actually dismantled piece by piece in the Greenland ice cap and, uh, and brought back to the U.S. That's just, uh, that's just incredible. Thanks for watching.